Hi, I'm Tommy Gölles. Today's video is about the Microsoft Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. Yep, you heard that correct, Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code. So we will talk about how to create Teams applications based on .NET and Blazor. Let's get started. As a Teams developer, you are most probably familiar with this slide. We will use it today to create some context of what we want to achieve with this video. Um, we will use web technologies and Visual Studio to create a simple tab and to connect that tab to Microsoft Graph. Um, what we are using to do that is something called Blazor. So what is Blazor? Blazor is a single page application development framework, and the name Blazor is a combination of the words browser and razor, the .NET HTML view generation engine. Blazor lets you build interactive web UIs using C Sharp instead of JavaScript. Blazor apps are composed of reusable web UI components implemented using C Sharp, HTML, and CSS. Both client and server code is written in C Sharp, allowing you to share code and libraries. Blazor can run client side C Sharp code directly in the browser using WebAssembly. Because it's real.NET running on WebAssembly, you can reuse code and libraries from server-side parts of your application. Alternatively, Blazor can run your client logic on the server. Client UI events are sent back to the server using SignalR. Once execution completes, the required UI changes are sent to the client and merged into the DOM. For more information, check out the URL on the bottom, blazor.net. Next to Blazor, um, the big topic of this video is the Teams Toolkit. And the Teams Toolkit actually is part of something that is called the Microsoft Teams Framework or Teams FX. A Teams Toolkit actually only is the IDE extension for Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. So there is a Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code that uses JavaScript to create all those things mentioned here in this list. Um, and we will use Visual Studio and .NET and Blazor to create only a couple of the elements of this list as we only have a limited time Today, we will check out project generation. Um, we will use what's called the F5 experience. So open up Visual Studio, press F5 and see what's happening. We will use the identity mechanisms of the Teams uh, FX and the Microsoft Teams toolkit to have a single line authentication to Microsoft Graph. And of course, we will have a look at the Blazor support of all those things. Um, I highly recommend you to check out the link on the bottom, github.com forward slash office dev forward slash Teams FX. This is actually the repository of the whole Teams toolkit. Um, there is a part for the JavaScript world and under packages and .NET SDK, there you can see the efforts and the changes that are made to um, the Visual Studio extension. A big, big, big emphasize on the word preview here. Um, we are still in a preview phase of the whole toolkit. So it's not GA, it's not general available. There's not yet the release version present, but we expect it to be there in the coming months. So um, you can check out what will be available to you as a developer in the future already today. Um, one last thing actually is the installation of the Teams toolkit. That's different between Visual Studio 2019 and Visual Studio 2022. Um, in 2019, it's a classic Visual Studio extension. So you need to go to your menu extension and search for Teams Toolkit. But since February 15, uh, you can install Visual Studio 2022 in the version 17.1.0. And there is actually a component in the Visual Studio installer. You need to open up your installer, click to the ASP.NET and web development section here, and then find the yeah, checkbox with Microsoft Teams development tools. This is what we are going to using for the demo now, because this is the current state. Um, it also uses .NET 6 compared to Visual Studio 2019. So if you're able, I would highly recommend you to go with Visual Studio 2022. So welcome to my demo environment. Uh, I will open up Visual Studio 2022. Uh, this is the correct version. And I will create a new project. I will select the Microsoft Teams app template here. Uh, that's the template actually we got from the component that we installed earlier. Click on next. 
give it a creative name, Teams Toolkit Intro. All right, create. Um, and this screen already is the part of the wizard for your Teams application. So we want to create a tab. That's the only artifact we are able to create by now. There will be in the future bot, of course. I will select an account. I'm going for my Microsoft 365 developer account because I will need permissions to create an Azure Active Directory application and also a Teams application, the Teams developer tenant. So I select my account here and you can click here if you don't have a developer tenant yet. And I highly recommend to create one. Click on create. Wait for a couple of seconds for Visual Studio to scaffold out the project. And here we are. So we got our Teams toolkit uh, project with a typical blazer, blazerish uh, structure of files here. Um, and we are gonna immediately press F5. Studio will create or yeah, generate the code, open up the browser, and I'm able to install my Teams toolkit intro application. I click on add here, so I'm going to the install screen and it will open up a personal or static tab here in the site. Wait for a couple of seconds and here we are. So what we are seeing here is already the Teams Toolkit knows my name. So it has some information about the current user. Um, that's actually done by this line of code here. So the await Teams user credential dot get user info async. We will ha have a look at the code in a couple of seconds. Um, second part of the demo is that there is an authorized button down here. Until now, we are only using the context from Teams. We're not talking to Microsoft Graph. Uh, if I click on authorize here, yep, the toolkit opens up a consent screen because we created a new Azure AD um, application uh, registration with, with installing or scaffolding our project. Same name, TTK intro. Um, as I'm uh, connected to my Microsoft 365 developer tenant here, I'm a global admin. I can consent on behalf of my organization. I will do that. Yep, I know the risk. I will accept it. And here we are. We get a profile picture and my name and my yeah dev tenant email address by calling the graph. How is that done? Let's head over to Visual Studio. I will stop the debugging for a second and let's dive into the code to give you an overview and introduction to the Teams Toolkit. So first of all, in the app settings, you see that the toolkit created a client ID and created all the different and necessary uh, configuration steps for our endpoint, the authority, tab endpoint, and all the configuration based um, on two things, the name we provided in the wizard and the actual account we used. So when scaffolding the project, it immediately created those artifacts and we're up and running with just pressing F5. So that's step one. Um, if you're actually looking for the credential or the, the secret, just small tip, look at manage user secrets. It's in there. In terms of structure, we are creating a tab. So there's a tab razor page. That's pretty, pretty simple. A diff with just a welcome component because the toolkit already uses a lot of Blazor components. In my component folder, I have a welcome.razor file that actually is the first screen of the demo. Um, and in there, uh, we saw that it greeted me with my name. And here we are, current user, username, or an error message if there's a problem. And how did it receive my name or yeah, look at it? Actually, this is the line here, await Teams user credential, get user info async. So this Teams user credential is actually an object um, that you get from the Teams toolkit. So that's something the library provides you with and you just need to call that and you get the basic user information. If you want to go out to the graph and get more data uh, next to just the, the basic name, um, let's have a look at the graph razor component. You see here, basically, it's already, again, using a couple of components. So this is the button here where we clicked on it to authorize. And then we have a profile card, the 
profile cut basically um, gets provided with the data from our graph call and is actually uh, responsible for rendering uh, the picture and the email address. But we want to look at the actually graph call. So what is happening if I click on, there is the button, here is the button and there is the on click event reload. So button on click calls reload and reload then goes in and says, okay, Teams user credential, get token async. Um, that's the first call to get really the a current user token. In our case, an exception was thrown because we didn't consent to our application yet. So we got into this catch block because you see here exception code UI required error. Uh, we needed to consent that. So we ran into get consent. Get consent makes a login and again makes the get token async with our scopes and it requires or open up uh, the additional window where we consented to our uh, AD application. Um, from there, it's pretty simple. Graph, get graph service client. And the get graph service client method um, actually uses a MS graph of provider with the Teams user credential and our scopes. That is something that you get from the Microsoft Teams toolkit as well. So this is a class that you can use or an off provider that you can use from the library and hand it over to the graph service client. So creating a new graph service client with the set provider. So it's implementing the interface that is used by uh, the .NET library of Microsoft Graph. From there, we just get a regular graph service client from the .NET library. So there's a new get reference to the .NET library of Microsoft Graph in the project as well. And with that graph client, it's pretty standard. Graph.me.request get async. And then of course, a little bit of marshalling to get the actual picture from the um, base64 encoded string to get an image. And that's the picture. So pretty, pretty straightforward to call the graph. If you want to call other endpoints, you would need to go to um, your Azure AD environment, configure additional permissions, position scopes, and of course, add those also here to the scope. And then you can call whatever you are allowed to or you want to at the graph and use it in the Microsoft Teams toolkit. Okay, that's it from an introduction point of view. So short recap, what did we saw today? Um, we talked about what is Blazor. We talked about what is the Microsoft Teams toolkit for Visual Studio. So this structure over here, how to install the toolkit. And we did a short demo pressing F5 and seeing the experience that is instantly available after installing and using the template. With that, thank you for your attention and happy coding.